statement. This is the Conservation Commission for uh, the 14th of April, 2016. The Commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Mount Hampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition. And Could you please speak up? Oh, sure. Thank you. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meetings, dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes uh, a notice of intent for installation of stove, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. Uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine the removal and management of non-native invasive plants on conservation properties owned by the city is subject to the Wetlands Ordinance or the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, the, then uh, 545, the request for determination of applicability to determine if there are any areas subject to Wetlands Act uh, or Wetlands Ordinance um, uh, parcels uh, described at 57, 50, uh, 65 Baker Hill Road. Uh, and then uh, other items um, not specific uh, to a time. Um, we didn't have any um, minutes, did we? Yes. Yes. So we did? Uh, the January minutes were already approved, but I forgot to file them to approve, so we don't need to vote on those. So we have to vote on the December. February. December and February. Oh, oh, that's right. There were a lot of attachments to that email. Yes. yes. So, so we I have, have a motion to approve the December 15th minutes. Is there a second? No second. Any amendments, modifications to those minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. And then we have uh, February as well. A motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any amendments or modifications? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Uh, then uh, first item, a request for determination of opportunity to determine if removal and management of non-native invasive plants on conservation properties owned by the city of Northampton is subject to the Wetlands Ordinance uh, and the Wetlands Act. Yeah. So, this is a staff-assisted This is. Uh, so this comes from the recommendations that Lori Sanders made in her most recent Rediscovering Northampton report, and mm -hmm. she is here to talk about this. So, okay. Lori. Um. <coughs> So I know ma many of you, but not all of you. I'm Lori Sanders, and as Sarah mentioned, last year, in, over the course of 2014 and 2015, I looked at all of the conservation land in the city of Northampton, which was uh, an informative exercise uh, in the kind of holistic way of, of looking at it, because it really highlighted not only the changes in the last 20 years since I first did the project, which at that point, there were only 11 properties totaling about 800 acres, and now there are more than 30 uh, with over close to 3,000 acres. So the scope was different, but visiting some of those original properties, what really what really stands out, and I think sort of widely acknowledged that in the last 20 years, uh, certain invasive introduced plants um, have really taken off. And what's interesting in terms of, uh, if you think about the floor of the, of, of the Commonwealth, with about 3,000 species. About a third of the fauna, a thir third of the flora, is introduced species from other parts of the world or from further south. But the species that we're most concerned with, the species that are really sort of galloping across the landscape and of interest and concern here within this board is that many of them were introduced for horticultural purposes, but they escaped the garden and they have naturalized and they're they're invading these natural habitats. And so of, of all those 900 plants, really we're worried about less, about less than 1%. So um, it's only about three dozen species that are really having a dramatic impact here in Northampton. And what this proposal does is it looks at, um, if you look at all the conservation areas in Northampton, many of them, uh, in terms of the integrity 
of the core area it, are in remarkably good shape. If you look at Fitzgerald Lake, the Sawmill Hills, the Mineral Hills, those core areas are really almost devoid of any introduced species, with the exception of a handful of species that might occur in wetland habitats or along trails or in, in, in many cases, like for instance in the Sawmill Hills, the sort of historically uh, disturbed uh, bordering perimeter. What this proposal focuses on are not those areas where there's already another management group like the Broadbrook Coalition or in this or the Mill River Greenway Initiative is right now really trying to develop a very comprehensive approach to addressing the invasive plants that are invading along the Mill River corridor. And so what I <coughs> try to do in this proposal is identify those handful of locations where either the invasion is not at a point where you just think, okay, give up here, <laughs> okay, uh, that's one. Uh, two, and perhaps, you know, certainly uh, in terms of this board, the areas that are uh, the most ecologically sensitive or, or valuable, whether that's for rare species or, or because the habitat in and of itself is a rare limited resource. And so my approach here is working in some cases with Sarah. I'm going to be taking the pesticide applicator license exam in May. But the approach is really to target the, the handful of species that we really know are, are really having impacts. And these are a Asiatic bittersweet, in some cases when we can, to try and suppress the Japanese knotweed, barberry. I know where you live. Are. I know where you are. Yeah, yeah. All right, in some cases, OK? For instance, at the intersection of, uh, of Rhine Road and Sylvester Road, that's a place where the population is at the moment relatively small and if with volunteers and staff and uh, my efforts, I think we can really knock it back so that financially down the road or ecologically, these place, these these handful of species aren't making like this enormous barrier, reducing wildlife value or compromising the habitats for, for some of our rare and endangered species here in, in Northampton. The approach is not, uh, not only targeted in terms of the species, but it's very targeted in terms of the application. And so there's going to be no foliar spraying, but it will be either Sarah has a, a uh, new tool which injects the herbicide, and, and then the other the other method will be you, you cut you cut you cut it and then you paint the stem. And maybe you've seen it as, as a bluing agent, so you can really identify. Okay, we did that one. And that's otherwise, if, if you lop a bittersweet or glossy buckthorn or any of those others, it's really kind of a Medusa si mm -hmm. situation. Yep. So anyway, it's, it's very targeted. There are about 14 areas uh, that we identified. And, and what's also kind of interesting to Sarah and I as we put the RDA together is she realized wetlands are such an important component of so many of the conservation areas. And so there are a handful of places where we could uh, work with, without the uh, outside of the proximity of, of wetland boundaries. But um, most others, no. You know, no, we're not necessarily in them, but we're near and within your jurisdiction. Is it possible without uh, a complete blocking of light through a tarp or something to get rid of that weed? Um, I, uh, I, I have never seen it done, but I mean, digging it out, is it really possible? I, I doubt it. Um, and when you think about the areas of Northampton, the, the amount of area that you would have to tarp and the, the length of time you'd have to do it. The other thing about that species is that there's actually new new rules in London, and or rather in England, where you can't get a mortgage if you have Japanese knotweed on your property because it's causing structural issues. I read that. Yeah, you know, it's it's felony. It's it's don't say it anywhere. And, it's very strict, yeah. and it's you know basically the size of the one digit of my pinky. If you have that much root material, it can resprout. So really, what's, if you look for me, I mean, uh, 20 years ago, I I don't. I, I wish you know. I wish we could go back in time and to see. All right, how many areas had had Japanese knotweed? There were some, I mean, mm -hmm. but boy, there are so so much more now. You know, I, 
I think about Grace Coolidge walking down from Ward, Ward Avenue and right. going along the Mill River. Right. You know, what what would Grace Coolidge think <laughs> think now? So. Well, what's scary about not is it's now becoming more shade adapted than it used to be. It used to grow like crazy in the sun, but hardly ever in the shade. But now they're, they're scrawnier, but there's you know it's mostly spreading by rootstock. And what we might see in an area like this, that's only a third of the plant. Two thirds yeah. of it is the rootstock extending out. And just the just the anecdotally, and this is probably I don't know ten years ago. It was coming into my property, and long story short, we put down a tarp to see, that, and all it did was it sort of kept growing and it even came out the other side. Out the other side, yeah. yeah. So. so you're targeting knotweed then? It's in selected, it on in selected areas. Because you only have, so I'm curious about the, you only say <laughs> herbicide uh, either on cuts them for injection, right? but can you really control knotweed by injection? Or would you cut and pay? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think really our, our primary focus this year will be, for instance, at, at, at the Garfield Avenue side or up at the Girl Scout Conservation Area, the population is pretty, pretty yeah. tiny. Ava Circle yeah. is, I mean, I was just there a couple days ago on a yeah. walk, and UMass is working on a project for a, a, an insect that has some promise. But for instance, uh, the two type of, types of um, leaf-eating beetles that help to suppress purple loosestrife. They were released here in Northampton. They're present here at, at three of the conservation areas, at least. And yet, in the last 20 years, purple loosestrife has really galloped yeah. forward, including at Brookwood Marsh, which ecologically is one of the most historically and ecologically interesting of all of the conservation areas mm -hmm. in Northampton. So, you know, these are tough questions. Yeah. Well, they're super asking, tough I mean, issues. I yeah, yeah. think it's great, but I'm just wondering about how we craft this so that it's flexible enough, but also restricted enough. Because it's a really big project, and there's very few words in the document. And mm -hmm. so that's my main comment, is that I really want something like this to happen. But in some cases, like purple loose stripe, how, would, how are you handling that? You thing? know, it, it's it's. It, it can't it can be handled, I don't think, this season. I mean, there's yeah. this is a very small budget that we have. Right. So r really it's And that was my other question, is that well, how long does something like this last um, into the future? That, that can RDA like this last? Um, well, because traditionally it's three years. Three years. Right? That's right. This specific project that I'm involved in, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, a, this is a determination that will go to the city. Um, so I'm just a contractor in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, we have a certain number of days for this one season. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that by showing some concrete, measurable uh, improvement in many of these areas where, again, the population is either small or Elwell Island, Rainbow Beach, some places where you know, are you going to get everything? Absolutely not. These are, if you look at other studies, they're looking at two, three year, inter, you know, time periods. So this is just sort of. Oh, so this is just for one year. One, one season. season. Oh, okay. And this, Sorry, for me, for okay. me, but you know, the hope I, I know for the city is to use this as a beginning point and then look again more comprehensively and, and, and maybe target additional Areas, Sarah. Maybe you can speak to that that part. Excuse part me. There will be public comment in a little bit. Uh, the the LL Island piece is actually happily a follow up because we were able right. to get a grant to deal with that last year. So this will be the second year of treatment on LL. So and, and that, it was primarily mechanical with a little bit of herbicide, but it, it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how that progresses in the future. You get any kind of funding, like from the county? Refuge or whatever, it's which controls. No, it's, it's really limited. It's mostly for stewardship and limitation grants that we've just been attacking things piecemeal with. So Historically, yeah. these, these I think are CPA funds. Yeah. I was kind of curious about um, this paragraph you have after you uh, listed your uh, conditions for the selected areas, uh, having to do with. Uh, forest cutting plan? I mean, I, 
I don't understand that paragraph. So we've had stewardship plans done for most of our larger conservation areas and a pretty consistent recommendation is to deal with the invasive species that are present there. Okay, so we have we have management plans of the We do. By the yeah. yeah, Mike Mori has put together all, I guess all of those. And uh, everything I think except for some of them. And in terms of timber value, I mean it's certainly compromised when you have bittersweet mm -hmm. coiling up. Oh yeah. I mean it's beyond I've seen compromise. The trees it's down. valueless. Yeah. So Okay. I was just curious as to where it fit in. Yeah. It's supporting, I would say. Um, and presumably there'll be some kind of learning document at the end of the first year to capture? Well, it, I think the one challenge we'll have is that, um, uh, uh, you know, my, my hope is to take some photographs pre and post. Mm -hmm. um, certainly when we worked at Brookwood Marsh where we had no herbicide application, but we had a team of 30 uh -huh. 30 people and, uh, and about 25 of those were high school kids who yeah. gave you hope for the future <laughs> and their energy level. I mean, it was dramatically different. And I think that's, uh, in terms of volu involving volunteers, that's a very satisfying piece. And if we can, you know, cut, cut, cut a glossy buckthorn and take a photograph of this sort of glossy buckthorn forest, cut it, paint it, and then next year, whether it's staff or something that uh -huh. Time to put together, but in this, in the initial proposal to the city, it's simply like a, a photograph and a photograph later uh, in this, in this just single season. So uh -huh, in the same season. Yeah, from that's my piece, and Sarah, maybe you can speak to other pieces for the city. And for now, it's it's really just proposed to be a one-year project. Would it be good to? Uh, document the learning and see sure. how, how we can course correct to find Zoom process it, going forward. It, it's, it's not ex this project, but there's another proposal in, in the planning stages with the Mill River. And one of the hopes there is many of the uh, or, uh, species are the same. And because invasives are becoming such an important issue from a conservation perspective, more and more studies are being done to look at, okay, what's the concentration you'd need? What's the most effective agent? It can make you pretty squirrely if you go on the internet and try to figure out, okay, this guy says, this right. study pr proves this, and then this study is, you know, they're similar, there's different commercial names in some cases, but um, one of the potential Components of the Mill River Greenway Initiative is to actually really look and do do sub sub treatments so that we can really learn some things from that and then get that out into the larger, you know, the broader uh, community of conservation. So really, like, not only not knock it back, but improve our understanding of how right. to do it that's, best. Yeah, that's the comment I had. Love that if you could set up some of those kinds of studies that you can get some information for from right. other people about it. I think that would be. Right, and there are a bunch you of people. include some internships or others. And in the future, I'm thinking yeah. of those studies to go back and actually evaluate. Oh, it'd be fabulous. Success. Fabulous. You volunteer in one of your classes? I, I'm going out on a work day to a removal basis on Tuesday, and so far I think we have 20, 25 students. Uh -huh. We're just going to Yeah. But for instance, uh, along the Mill River, I know one of the concerns was that it where individual property owners were, were doing things and it was piecemeal and in terms of how do you handle the material afterward. In the case of Japanese knotweed, there's tremendous risk of setting it down over here right. and yeah. lo and behold. I remember when you gave that little tour down there and one of the women in the tour group said, oh no. Put away your the, shovels. I was the one who was <laughs> cut all over by Federal Street. She yeah. was the one who was cutting each year. But listen, we, you know, weed whacking is great, but um, put, away, put away your shovel. Right. Well, uh, uh, I, I think that the thing, you took away the knotweed and the burning bush from the Mill River. I wonder what the uh, yeah. understory yeah. would look like. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you going to do with that? berries and well hopefully and we're, we're not going to have fruit you know because you're going to do it before the yeah, fall yeah yeah we're going to yeah. 
get going. Um, you know. So then, is this really just proposing for this summer? Is that the because that wasn't didn't, that that's didn't see my that time mm -hmm. frame on it? So it's just this one summer. But it, is the idea to have this RDA be a three-year thing, mm -hmm. so that there could be other projects that could and hopefully be there will the be some sort of funding for follow-up, but we don't have it at this point. So we could presumably um, have a, a, a conditional, um, yes, we'll assume that it's a three-year work process, but we want to see that we're only seeing the first step. Yeah, and a lot of the follow-up will be hand-pulling and just sort of maintenance, so not as widespread as this first year. And it won't, you know, I mean, because we're going to be very careful uh, and not using foliar application, I, I think it would be very little uh, risk harm to other species. Other questions, comments from the commission? I've seen some foliar applications, but you have to be very careful on how you use it. Um, fish. Lincoln. Lincoln fish. Show us an area where you, you've done it to free of the whole hillside full of blueberry bushes way up country. And, uh, very, very selective foliar management. And the, the blueberry bushes were, were great and everything around it was gone. Huh. But, um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's so tricky because with, you know, oh, dri yeah. drift with yeah. wind, and uh -huh. I think if we, if we really concentrate on, on this other method, yeah. it will be effective and I think as a, as a working as a small team can really uh, cover quite a bit of area. We will see. Mm -hmm. uh, with Brookwood Marsh I went up there and I thought, oh, couple of kids, we'll be fine. Oh my heavens, you know, what an enormous pile we had. Yeah. Brush, brush yeah. pile we had. Yeah. Two or three truck trips to get the stuff out of there. Yeah, most of it on, was on Peters. Yeah. That was the important thing, it was a way to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. But those kids were, were crazy. <laughs> they, they went nuts. I mean, it was a heck of a job. But I think, for instance, like uh, there's some Ilanthus that's growing on Elwell yeah. Island. And I think in that case, we'll just take a chainsaw and, and girdle that. We're not going to cut that down or cut it up into pieces. So it'll just. Be a nice dead branch for an eagle to perch on. <laughs> Other comments, questions? Comments from the public? My name is Susan Enns, and I live on the parking lot side of uh, the coach light and uh, the, the Barrett Street, the Barrett Street uh, marsh is like one of the most joyous places it's a, a treasure and I, I i've been i grew up in the woods i have i have family that are field biologists i i mean i've been knowing about this stuff for a long time and you know so forth and i'm just kind of wondering if you do start this program i am definitely in favor of removing like the invasives because they get way too big and they crowd out all the stuff they should crap they should be crowding out and there's other stuff that goes on and you know sometimes the birds eat whatever they eat and it gets passed through and planted there but the thing is uh, are you good this is like now the nursery time where everybody is laying their eggs they're do, making their tadpoles, they're using the they're using the marsh as a daycare center for their fawns, and I'm hoping that you're not going to start this uh, thing until everybody's kind of grown up and is being able to like kind of fend for itself, because there's a lot of mammalian species that are very important to that area. Number one, number two is I'm hoping that the uh, kind of uh, methods that you use won't be like um, more intrusive than possible because we have a resident population of various wildlife species that lives there on a permanent, mostly permanent basis. And also for the aesthetic effect, because that, that marsh, the Barrett Street Marsh is like magic. It's like, you know, like when everything starts getting green, it's magic. And 
you know, and then when you see all the birds nesting and the, you know, all the peepers and everybody else. So I'm really hoping that, you know, that everything will go well because, yeah, I've noticed the blue, the little blue, you know, things that have been, or the little ribbons that have been tied here and there. I don't know what they're about, but I'm sure that there's some meaning to it. And, okay, that, be, that so called beaver deceiver, what are you going to do with that? It's apparently been useless, and it's like an unsightly mess, like when you're going to, over the little overpass to uh, King Street or the, up to Jackson Street. And uh, it doesn't seem, seem to be useful. Two, two, two separate issues. Um, yeah. Well, I'm just like throwing that in. But, but in uh, terms of like the invasive species, I would definitely be in favor of that as long as, you know, it's it's not being as long as it's not going to be too intrusive, aesthetically unappealing, and it's not going to disturb uh, the species, uh, the species nur laying and nurturing and whatever. The habitat value for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because it's like, it's a gem, it's a treasure. I just that that area isn't even on the list though, right? I can't remember. Yeah, 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 it's up to how, how I ended up here, because I saw a yellow sign saying that this is what the meeting was going to be, out, be about, or like at least partly about. Well, that's, that's a very interesting conservation area. Uh, it is. Oh, it is on the list. I grew, yeah, up, I grew up in the woods, and I've been living in a lot of different places, and that's a very big special. Let, 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 let me address the question. Then. Right, but can you try to, I'm glad you addressed the commission, and we'd like you oh, to also okay. address the commission. We try to avoid okay. people okay. debating uh, each other. Yes, yes. Uh, so in, in the Barrett Street Marsh, there are, it is a kind of a, a cornucopia of all the, all the plants that are the least wanted, that have, uh, invaded in there. There's a section not far from the bike path where there's a pretty healthy population of Japanese knotweed, but I think potentially uh, suppressible. The species that I'm probably most concerned about at the Barrett Street Marsh, which did not occur there 20 years ago, is glossy buckthorn. And what's kind of in interesting about glossy buckthorn is it's a fruit that's bird dispersed but it's a species that's actually benefited from the beavers because the beavers have cut, although I don't believe they're there at the moment, but they have been cutting the alders, which has provided a kind of a release for the buckthorn. So, and buckthorn, aside from, although it has a, some birds eat it, it has a cathartic, a secondary chemical that makes them vomit. So you'll see those fruits on the, trees for a long time. The other thing about glossy buckthorn is that the architecture is such, it's very open, so it has almost no uh, wildlife habitat value. And that's the thing that really stand, it is important with many of these, whether it's a garlic mustard or, or glossy buckthorn or bittersweet, is that in some ways you can almost consider it like ecological pavement. There's very little habitat value. There's a lot of green, maybe, but really, if you look at the, e the leaves, the secondary compounds are such that nobody's eating it, um, or a very limited wildlife value. Mm -hmm. So upon cutting the glossy buckthorn out of one section of the Bear Street Marsh, it will be much more open. There's no question about that. But um, that, that sort of goes without saying. But, and there's some uh, honeysuckle, bush honeysuckles in there too. There's, some yellow iris. I mean, it, it's really, if, if you ever want to lead an invasive species or have an invasive species, w which are the ones that we were, were wondering about? But um, the comment from the public is, is spot on in terms of my, my feeling that is if you want to go to any conservation area in Northampton and see more wildlife uh, in a short amount of period, it's, it's the Barrett Street Marsh. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of another comment. Are you staying out of resource areas? No, we'd be in, in some of them. I mean, we'd be in BBW and potentially in some areas, depending on, uh, like, for instance, at the Girl Scout property, uh, the most, there's scattered but present uh, uh, multi-floor rows within the seep area or right on the bank. So yeah, and I think that's the right thing to do. The comment question I had is, isn't the local ordinance strict about that, or does that get changed? Because I remember uh, if it's, 
that, if that, the activity is a resource area improvement, mm -hmm. then that's one of the exemptions to the, 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 uh, to the protected It came up when it came up in the North Street property. property. Well, the, uh, that was that came up as an alternative. But that I think we've changed the ordinance since. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I think it it up, there was changed. there was somebody with a, a, a decaying cesspool in a resource area. And to have the ordinance prevent us from having them repair it seemed kind of nice. Is that, so is that the thing that tipped the balance? That tipped okay. the balance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. I mean, yeah, because, well, I mean, it's not like land underwater, but for instance, the new six acre parcel over near Pomeroy Terrace, which is not part of this, uh, you'd only, or Elwell, you're only in resource areas. Yeah, right. Riverfront, right. Yeah. LUW, whatever. Any other comments? So is that property on the? That one is not. Oh, no, the that would be a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> motion to close? Yes, motion to close. And second? Second. One, two, three, aye. Aye. Um, so uh, this is a <coughs> staff assisted uh, application. Uh, that uh, for although the, the, the language requires us to determine that it will not create an alternation even though uh, it's in uh, an area under jurisdiction. In fact, we hope it will create an alteration, but a positive one, a beneficial one, and that's the justification. So um, and we can uh, issue a negative determination. Um, the condition I would, uh, and checkbox three, the condition I'd like to add is that they come back at the end of the, uh, the uh, uh, growing season, well, I guess after the autumn, and when you know, have uh, the full cycle. So somewhere between autumn and this time next spring, to come back to both the photos that we were talking about and some narrative about. So what's, what's the learning for um, phase two? But with, that's the only condition I can I, I would just bring up a question again about the time frame on this because if it expands, this, for example, after this one season, which I think is great, I mean, but if you expand it, are we fine with this going forward? Like, there's nothing in here that says, well, any berries or you know something that could spread will be appropriately bagged and taken away, or uh, it just seems like it could use a little more. On because for a larger project, because it's limited to the spring, that type, at least this year, that type of thing wasn't needed in right. the narrative. But you could you could just place that. But well, could we? I mean, could it be that we say that this is okay for this one year, right. and then this after the report, we could work. extend it, extend the project as amended as necessary? I, I'd be totally happy with that. Yeah, I agree. More mm -hmm. like an adaptive management yeah. plan or something. That this is assumed to be a, a standard three year, uh, but that after this first phase, uh, the subsequent uh, phases will depend on us reviewing and doing mm -hmm. uh, a more detailed plan yeah. for the later phases. Did, you, did I say that clearly enough for you to make sense out of it? All right, so uh, is there a motion to? Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so it will not create an alteration, a, a, issue, a, a negative determination, checking box three with those two conditions of uh, photos and learning at the end uh, and uh, uh, review a more detailed plan for subsequent work after this first phase. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next item, a request for determination of applicability to determine if there are any areas subject to the Weapons Protection Act or the Weapons Ordinance. Uh, uh, parcels listed as 57 and 65 Baker Hill Road. Can you to talk about those? That's us. Please, <laughs> can you provide a little summary? Is, is this meeting, um, have, have the wetlands been determined? Has there been a test done to this point? Has there been any wildlife? Oh, it's a wildlife done? refuge. Yeah. Stuff. 
study done in so the area? This application only sought to determine whether there's, there are any wetlands on the site, but it has nothing to do with wildlife whatsoever. There's, I'm sure there's deer and turkeys. So did you find that it was a wetland? No. No. So you, Which you were out there. I, went, I had to run out before it snowed, but it's it's white pine. It's it's on it's wood. upland. It, this doesn't say that they're building lots. It just says that there's no jurisdictional resource there. We, uh, I mean, we lived in the woods as my, when my kids were younger, and there was a swamp. We were always afraid. Not too far down in the area that uh, building is proposed, um, there's also a river that runs. There were pine trees that were put up right from there all the way up across our. Uh, adjacent to our house um, and even today one of our neighbors can hear the river when they're in the basement but so yeah it, I mean we just have always assumed it was a wetland and so you find no wetland and so these are the lots on, on top of the hill on the I guess it would be the can I get a little closer no, sure sure I'll something. probably I promise to behave <laughs> So. <laughs> Sorry, watcher. My husband left me with all these questions that he, he uh, a meeting to go to. But there were all these um, existing conditions that surround the wetland, and if you're going to build it, but what you're saying is it is not a wetland. But existing conditions um, as far as... Well, first of all, if you want to go back to notification of neighbors, there was no notification That's of neighbors. That's not required. That never happened. Right. Um, uh, what do we have here? Uh, removal of vegetation, significant trees. This is all in regards of the actual building on the site. Um, uh, landscaping and planting uh, within the riverfront area, wetland and wetland buffer, location of erosion control behavior, limit of work line, utility line, stormwater management forms. So where is the, the riverfront that you mentioned? Where? Well, um, that would be the mill river. I wish Jerry was here she, <laughs> because she lived there before me. Down slope from these lots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 Baker Hill Road is here, and I'm not sure where the beginning of the river is, but it does run under and then into that whole whole the area. Right, you right, don't right, see right. it, but it's yeah. under the ground. So At one time, it was very swampy uh, in that whole area. But there, so you're just talking about things that are below ground, then, not? This below ground, well, the swamp wasn't below ground, but right, what I'm told by my neighbors is that the reason why pine trees were built was to absorb some of the uh, river that did run in that area. And one of my neighbors today says when he goes in his basement, he can hear the river. Um, but they were told at the time, don't worry about anyone building across because it's a wetland. And you know, and it, it, it is on top of a hill. Hmm? It's on top of a hill. And well, where they're going to build? Yes, but it's still. You can still have a river running under, even though it's on top of a hill. It's not a huge hill. <laughs> uh, but the area where it's being built slopes. Can I, can I ask a question? Because I didn't go to see the site. Uh, was the building site clear? Clear where they're proposing to build? It's and not. It's not staked. And I just sort of dropped around. And but the property boundary is fairly clear, and it's outside of any of the jurisdictions. It, it, it seemed to me to be mm -hmm. like it was. I. I mean, if the commission would prefer, we could all go out and we could bring shovels and stuff. But I mean, anything. Wetlands only refer to things within the top twelve inches of the, of the soil. Anything below that is groundwater. That's that. That's not under Wetlands Protection Act jurisdiction. But if you go from Baker Hill and you go down the hill to the bottom of the hill behind Nonatuck Street and Riverside Drives on the other side, that is a, is a swampy area oh, yeah. down at the, at the bottom And land. you hear peepers but, in the springtime. But it gets on the side of the hill, if the lots don't extend down to the bottom of the hill, they would not be in proximity to. And they, I mean, they do go part of the way to the, down the bottom, but that's that's somebody else's yard at the at the the very bottom of the hill. Oh. So, so the, piece of property. the piece of property that they're proposing to build uh, it runs is more, will they front onto Baker Hill Road? Or are they yes. Yeah. 
these four lots right here. Right at the end of Baker Hill Road, there's four lots. So did you see the, the public notice sign? That was yeah. Posted? So it's that's sort of the center of, of those lots. That's just the. Uh, so you can see the swampy area might be yeah. down in yeah. here Yeah, I think it's at kind the of, of the down hill. in here. The Riverside Drive is. Where's Riverside Drive? Outside. It's not. It's not shown on that map, but it would be more in this direction. If that. Was the mm. So these. This. Square these four lots. That's the. Yeah, yeah. be useful to be able to see larger than what than what that uh, map shows. Yes. Now, when you do a wetland um, study, you look for vernal pools, but you also, someone had told me, you take a fingerprint of the actual soil, and that tells you whether it's a wetland. Is that correct? Well, there's the, yeah. There's no, yeah. You, first, you look at the plants in this state. Yeah. In Connecticut, they look at the soils first. But in and you look, oh, we look, look at, at the, the plants. They, they look at the plants. And then they check the soils. Mm -hmm. And if it meets the criteria right. set out for, for both the soils and the plants. And so you don't look like if there are vernal pools or anything like that, you don't? If there are vernal pools, they only uh, show on a, on a, on a <laughs> heritage, natural heritage map, mm -hmm. at least the ones that have been identified. Mm -hmm. The deer, the red fox, the bears, the owls, the turtles, the um, woodchucks, the wolves. <laughs> they don't count. No. They don't count. It's a haven. It's, it's a haven. If, if there's a big circle on a natural heritage map, and, and, uh, yeah. you look it up and, and you find out that uh, there's fox turtles there, for example, um, then they would be in, a, in an area that was under their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, but not ne wouldn't necessarily be a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of, so what we're concerned with are a lot of different things that you've mentioned. Vernal pools, wetlands, rivers, and they all have to do with some kind of habitats and how water moves. Yeah. As long as you're far enough away from them, it's not a problem for us. I mean, you might have some issues with the city on other reasons like zoning. <clears throat> well, implement and stuff, but what we're concerned with mostly are those that you are doing things far enough away that it's not going to be yeah, harm. And there's lots of Thank different you. things, lots of different categories, lots of different things, like you said, weapons and rivers and rivers. And it gets a little confusing once you start thinking about it, but we're really just concerned with those kinds of things and that you're not doing anything close enough that could be able to those trees. close enough? I, would I guess I'm just so curious to see where, where you would be building. At one point, there was a flow, a heavy flow of water, and that's why we have these huge pine trees that were built to absorb some of the water. Uh, pine, trees, pine trees can grow in well and soil. I don't know exactly what kind of pine trees they were. I was just told that you know they built a lot of, put in a lot of trees there to try and absorb. Oh, yeah, I mean, I didn't think I just I didn't see a the northernmost lot? It looks like it goes down here. Yeah, see. Down the slope and very top corner. Yeah, I mean, it does, there is, there's a definite slope to the rear. But I didn't. Yeah. I mean, but there's not anything noted on here. Yeah, I mean, there's no. There's nothing on the USGS map as far as streams or yeah. what was. And are, are you, I mean, it, so the river is, is here, is that? Yeah, no, we know, we yeah. know that, but. Um, so where where is the, where is the stream 
about on, on this one. Is it Jerry who? Well, they all get water in their basement, but Jerry is, I wish she was here. She was I mean, that, that's just groundwater. There's nothing that's on their station. That's half mm -hmm. the houses mm -hmm. on this city. It's just like this. This is Baker Hill Road, right there. Yeah. yeah. That woman right there. So she said there was a stream. When she, she's been up there about 30 years. She said that there was a stream that went down like that. But I mean, wetlands are sort of ephemeral and they do change, but we can only make determinations about what's existing currently. And there, there were, like the William Street Brook and the, the King Street Brook used to be a broke ground resource and something that created a segment of pipe and that changed a lot of the wetlands characteristics around the city. Mm -hmm. Now, why in Connecticut do they test the soil and you folks just test the plant life? Because we, 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 we can only deal with anything within 12 inches of the surface. Anything below that is ground. I mean, we also look at the soils, but primarily the first thing we look at is the plants. You know, what was consulted, the first thing you look for is the plants. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the plants, then you also test the soils because a lot of times the soils are more restricted than the plants. In other words, the, the, the wider soils sometimes get beyond where the, the plants have come up because the plants are maybe shallow root. So you, but you check the soils because most commissions will want to see some soil tests and, and uh, even DEP who oversees us likes to see a transect somewhere along your wetlands line that shows you also tested for the soils. We didn't get any information at all with this application. This guy was basically like confirming for me whether there's wetlands, yeah. soils or wetlands here or not. But. They didn't call me in, and my company did the <laughs> land survey on this four lots. Um, and I would have been called in if it was what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the gentleman's not here to, to represent this. I have no problem making him wait longer, going out and digging a bunch of holes. It's done. That would be fine with me. Seems like there's no harm done by postponing the decision. We can just continue the case. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sarah and any of us who want to accompany her can go out and dig, see, dig, dig a couple of holes and see, see what comes up. It doesn't look from the map that there's anything, any reason to believe yeah. um, that there's uh, wetlands there. Uh, as uh, Trish said, if uh, the, the issue is groundwater, that's probably true for third to a half the homes in the city. This in no way says that if, if you dug a foundation that it would, you wouldn't have water in your basement, but that's just not something that we have yeah. jurisdiction over. Yeah. We have the oldest tree in Bay State. Unfortunately, Bay State. also yeah. not the or the I wish it were. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, property pins may be in the, um, not for the four lots necessarily, but for the yeah, I'm small sure big parcel. Well, why don't we continue the case and uh, schedule the time to go take a look? Yeah. Yeah, and in, in terms of, you know, this where you, this stage that we're at, it does say in here that neighbors within 100 feet. That's, uh, that's, that's not required for everybody. It's not required that we know, because well, all of a sudden this thing up here. The first is the determination of whether it is a jurisdictional area. If it is an area under jurisdiction, then they file a, 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 a no, they actually have a plan, so they have an intent. Then, yeah, then they have to do all the notifications. Okay. This application is a determination of applicability. It doesn't require sending out um, okay. notifications to the neighbors, um, but just by you know looking at the sign is something's going to happen and you show up. Yeah, yeah we, we do go above the state law locally because we do put that sign up. That's not required by state law. There is it? No. Wow. There is a legal ad in the Gazette, but nobody reads it. So yeah. So we do the sign show. I read the monies. <laughs> so, motion okay. to continue to motion to get a meeting in two weeks? We do. Is there realistic data to get out there between now and more? We 
Yes, we don't have a, so at an issue we don't have a meeting location currently because be, they're going to be redoing the, the basement, so there won't be any handicapped access. So we're not allowed to have public meetings up here. Huh? So wow. we're searching for a location. If I can find one, there will definitely be a meeting to it. Okay. Well, <laughs> we can so to the next. Uh, meeting. So let's let's say it. Let's let's say it. We'll, we'll assume that it's She gave it to me? Is there a motion to that effect? I uh, motion to continue until I get to And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was starting a different sentence, so I apologize. So we have just continued. Oh, okay. Someone Thanks. handed me this, and I don't want to take it away. It's a cute little picture. <laughs> I don't want to take someone's paper. Uh, okay, we still got a little time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. So next, we have somebody wants to do metal detecting. Yes. Just Somebody wants to do metal detecting. Somebody actually has asked for Yes, I'm sure plenty of people already do metal detecting, but this is just person who is required. I just want to just one of the ground. Like that. Like every. Must be heck on a golf course. Just a lot of Um. And this is where? So this is the section in the Mill River Greenway that is next to 91. Um, so he sort of wants to walk around on the old meadows for us and see what's out there. And so anything interesting is going to go to the yes. start But he said he's, most metal detectors, including his, are only able to get stuff within six inches. So I, he hasn't really found a whole lot ever that's particularly interesting. So you should have come out to the place out on Route 9 and Bad Beaver Brook there. We found yes. tons. Yeah. Well, I have a tough time believing it's the items that you donated. He has, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, he, he actually, he has a relationship with Historic Art Camp. We're just happy he asked, really. I, yeah, right. Seems like a fine... I, I never understand people who decide to spend their weekends doing this, but if he wants to do it, it's fine by me. Do we need a motion or just a just uh, sense of the meeting? Yeah. Seems like yeah. no objection. We'll don't allow it. Um, see what Barry has to say. Uh, I think. Anything else that we need to? Uh, we have an exciting conservation restriction to sign. So this has already been approved by the commission. Um, so this is the conservation restriction for the Zuski piece of the Rocky Hill Greenway. This was last year's land grant. So Mass Audubon is holding this at no cost to the city. So it just needs signatures. And so this is... Um, What's the name of this parcel? It's the, the Zuski parcel. So it's right before the, if you're heading toward Northampton on Route 10 from East Hampton, yeah. it's on the left side of the road right before the right path bridge. Okay. Oh, no, 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 okay. All right. Um, Does that go all the way up to the golf course? Not all the way. There's a person. So Barry, you've yeah, I've come out of hibernation. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's that time of year again, and I, I, you know, it's it's hard to for me to motivate myself because I got a zillion things, as I'm sure you have a zillion things on on your plate. But in bringing myself here, it's to motivate myself as well as you guys. So um, well, I think it's. It, it, uh, I don't know where things would have moved if Ned Huntley were still in his position. But, uh, but he does not have a replacement. Mm -hmm. The city doesn't have somebody else. So uh, how do priorities get set? I don't know. Uh, I, but I did send an email to my counterpart at DPW. At least after that, this would be a possibility to take a look at for now, even if there's no action that's able to be done. Because where we left it, um, as, as I recall, um, there was uh, signage, curb cuts, and clearing of the under uh, the, the culvert um, under the road. Those were the big things. 
you know, the culvert, the stones to smooth them out, the, the cuts, what was it? Uh, those were the two biggest things. Then there were related issues. I, I, we were also looking at the speed bumps, but that's separate, I, I understand. Right, right. You, were, oh. you, you got a petition going, as I recall. Yes, and there was a hearing, and you, with... Um, mm -hmm. We supported, we supported the, uh, the only thing we could comment on is the uh, uh, wildlife value, but we, we sent a letter. Um, yes. To, was it to Ryan? Is he, was he the chair? Yes. Um, so we'll just pick that up again and see what you hear back and yeah. see whether we can nudge DPW to do with the... the the plan was last fall that there was going to be some clearing of, um, of the culvert and cutting of uh, more um, more cuts in the curbs to uh, allow better transit. Let's see if we can make that happen. That would be great. I, you know, if, if I think we all decided it wouldn't be that expensive, but if there's any expense that there may be a shortfall then I would ask Sarah to start to look to CPA to get that in the works, put that on their agenda. Well, let's see. First, I, I agree. It sounds like it shouldn't be more than a, a few hours of a cruise time. So Yeah, that, which is what we were hoping to get a sense of. Well, if you can get a load of stone, a smaller size stone, at the entrance to the culvert, you might have to dump something over that. Yeah, would allow the turtles to navigate through that tunnel. I, I've just, you know, I've already seen two at that at that key intersection that have been squished. And, uh, already this spring? Already. I, I saw a third one, but not over that bridge area. And then uh, I saw 30. It was, it's, I just followed the street cardinal way down, and it seemed like I was just looking for a minute, and I realized it had been an hour. I just kind of counted them up and photographed some of them. Just struggling to move. Frogs. Fraud, uh, frogs, yeah, were there, uh, some of them with the hind legs smashed so that they were just, and it's pretty, it's pretty gruesome, really, and it, it's just insane that it's a regular occurrence over there, so. Um, well, we'll see what we can do to uh, in, have the plan implemented that we great. put forward last fall. And I will try and get work on the web. And, and we, the other thing was to get people in, within the city, just in general, to monitor their fatalities, to make them aware of something that um, Scott Jackson and that Michael Jones have initiated with their websites. So I'm gonna, maybe, maybe Jack, well, the, we can touch bases the, the, on The pictures you had last year were um, hard to ignore. So I think both. Yeah, yeah, I think the God that looks out for turtles timed it. Uh, so. Well, it's uh, good of you to uh, sustain the attention, and uh, if you hadn't emailed, I, I would have forgotten all about it. Um, other things come up, so uh, okay, great. Thanks, for, thanks for bringing it up, and we'll keep... Uh, I'll, I'll stay in touch with Jack, yeah. with Jack and, yeah. and Sarah. Good. What's the tension? Huh? Carnage. Cardinal <laughs> way. Oh, it has a, a cardinal, yeah. Right, a nice, both uh, it's alliterative. Yeah. <laughs> Make headlines. You know. Well, Dan Crowley was asking me about it because he saw me present this three or four years ago, and I was speaking to him about something else. And he said, "What's what's going on with the turtles?" And he was thinking in terms of doing an article. I said. There'll be a time where it will be helpful to have an article to get people involved, but it's not quite yet. Well, let's see if we can, uh, without the, the help of the Gazette, uh, get yeah. uh, DPW to uh, move forward on this. I, I don't pretend to know the internal dynamics of DPW. We'll ask them to leave it, but um, we'll find out what we can. Uh, thanks, Kevin. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Anything else? No. DPW? Well, Ned had announced he was leaving to take a job oh. in East Hampton, and then that died. It turned out why he was leaving was because he was ill. Well, it came as a surprise to a lot of us. Yeah, you heard that absolutely. Yeah, that died a few months ago. Two months? Yeah, he's 55. Yeah, he wasn't very old. He wasn't very old. 
And he, so first, I, I, I got what I heard, heard this from uh, Paul Spector when he was still uh, the uh, council, city councilor, that uh, first, okay, it's going to take a lower pressure job. Um, I guess in East Hampton. And then he never was long enough to actually assume he was responsible. Um, went down here a lot faster than he even he apparently thought. So, um, yeah. So, we'll find out whatever you learn and then, uh, and, you know, appreciate Barry's concern. Um, and I'm I, sure I the exec could make a big story out of it. I would it. imagine that at least the, the curb notching would be no big deal. I mean, yeah. And the, I'm not sure about the other stuff, whether that's even, engine, even a good idea from an engineering perspective. But right, well that's the analysis part that we talked yeah. about last fall. Something they, they figure out is, is that going to interfere with the functioning of the culvert? Uh, it shouldn't. I mean, instead of having large boulders that turtles can't navigate through, they would just cover that, the right. large boulders with smaller Fill it in so there's a so, navigable yeah. surface for the turtles. We'll find out. Okay. But yeah, I can, <laughs> on a slow news week I can see the Gazette this I guess it's probably not far from the actual headline that would come up. Oh well. Anything else we need? To uh, so the 2016 land or local acquisitions for natural diversity. If you're not into it, acronyms, grants are due in July, and we found out that you can apply for as many as you want. So we're going to apply for two. Uh, so one of these is the coal parcel that um, this is no longer an executive session item, but the the coal parcel that the commission approved. Um, what those streets? Are those near Jim? Yeah, but those, that was the one in your neighborhood. Coal. Oh, the, yeah. it was very expensive, but it yes. took some building lots out of yes. Uh, yeah, four hundred. Yeah. So it was something near where you, near where you grew up. On uh, um, in Florence. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're getting this in between. Oh, it was in between like Clark Street and. Yes. Yeah. Right. I don't remember right. the names of the streets. Uh, so I that remember the visual of the map. So that's one of them, and the other one I don't know how many of you remember Kensington Estates. This was the subdivision that came in and they, they filed for a resource area delineation basically during a drought, but it wasn't an official drought. Yeah. So they had a river that didn't have any river from. Yeah. So we're, that's our other one. So that, that's a dead project. Oh, no, 66? Yeah, that's so 66 in Glendon Road. That would be a great project. So we have a, we have a site cool. purchase and sale for that. So the, the question for you is with the change in leadership in Boston, this is the first time that the application has been clear and explicit that projects that may allow hunting will be given priority. So the coal parcel clearly that's that's, really? that's not a good idea. But bow hunting may at least be worth a discussion for the Kensington State's parcel. Yourself. Was this an executive session discussion that I wasn't involved with? I don't remember the uh, I believe it was. I, I missed one so you must have talked about it. I don't know. Okay. So it, is that worth I, there's it's a hundred point application that's worth five points. <laughs> um, what we, cause how would we, we, how would we, without, I mean, could we, do we? We could at least commit ourselves to having a discussion yeah, about it later, sure. but we couldn't officially, I don't know because we wouldn't want to tie ourselves down forever like we did with the, with the, uh, we, could, the we could say FLCA that um, after careful uh, deliberation, the Conservation Commission has allowed uh, uh, bow hunting on certain conservation land, and might cons and would consider this yeah. parcel. Um, but I wouldn't even say that unless there was a similar sense of the meeting. Because we can certainly sense. consider it. That's, I, I don't think I don't think we can say more than that. Would that get us any points? It might. <laughs> we also we lose I think seven points because we've gotten so many land grants. <laughs> We're hoping to make up for that. We pay somebody at the state level which, uh, whose job it is to figure out point systems. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. Maybe the Republicans will have too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So does it seem like that's at least worth mentioning that we have that discussion? I mean, it, it's a very wooded parcel. It's, it's big enough. 
and certainly not for gun hunting, but for boat hunting. Well, I, we have we have set a precedent that we will consider, um, and if all factors align, then we might say yes. But I don't know if we can do that in advance. I, I wouldn't want to do that actually until it's a no. Does that seem all right to everybody? Uh, it might, mm -hmm. might help us take some money to buy this thing. And if we don't, if we end up not getting the grant, then we don't have to have the discussion. But it's now this personal first chapter. And um, uh, for how much money are we hoping to get for these? Yeah. Full price? Uh, the, we haven't quite worked out the numbers, but 400,000 anyway. Which is still trying to. Still trying to figure out the maximum is per project. Right? Yeah. That's the total for the two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only piece of mail is a forest hunting plan and it's mostly in Williamsburg. Uh, but this is, so Beaverbrook Broadbrook yeah. parcel is here and then there's these two small parcels. This one won't be cut, this one will. And then this is uh, Beaverbrook Country Club, which they're also going to be doing. Pretty significant amount of cutting on it. It's not our property. So this is the, we can't say anything about this, but that's still the one for these. I can't um, imagine there's that much to Last time, and it was, um, trying to remember, it was further down by the Girl Scout parcel. Um, they were, um, there was a lot of, uh, streams and stuff in there that they were crossing uh, and we put some conditions yeah. around that. And there, there's no stream crossings in that. Okay. So this is just information yeah. for us? Okay. That's it for me. I, as, as your representative to the CPA, yes. uh, <laughs> we're coming down to the wire here and um, I want to know what your sense is. How hard should I fight for the conservation fund? There's a lot of proposals um, competing with it, and if it's going to get, I don't think there's a chance it'll get completely eliminated because they know the value of the conservation fund. But Wait, you know, what's the, what's it was eighty thousand dollars that was asked for in that. And that's in that fund, which is and that's uh, how much soft money have we been spending each year in recent years? Uh, it depends on, the, on the year. Um, we don't have any money currently. In it's all used up, and that's why I think. No, I know, but how much have we actually ended up spending? Uh, depending on the year, sometimes it's sixty or seventy thousand. Sometimes it's only ten or twenty. It depends on what we have in the hopper. Oh, we have seventy-five cents. Well, there's there's money that's allocated for that category, oh, okay. but it's also used for other conservation projects, and it, it's it's been spent pretty consistently along. So there's no backlog of funds that are available. But um, I think the feeling on the group, and we'll have more discussions about this coming up, is that with all the competition for funds they're looking for ways to pare it down mm -hmm. so even if, if if we come back in the fall for the next go around and say we've we got a reduced amount this time but we can apply mm -hmm. in the fall for you know more funds to beef that up again if we have so it depends on whether we have something hot that looks like we're um, going to need to be able to jump quickly um, and come up with you know, surveys and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, do we know of anything? In well, there's these two that we're applying for land grants for. They're different stages of due diligence now. And some smaller ones as well. There's more in the queue waiting to be purchased than there generally is at the moment. And if, if some combination of those came to fruition at the same time that we might be with some money on the table to Yeah. I mean it, where it stands now, if it weren't funded at all, we would have to pass up some land purchase opportunities. 
Well, I think we can make a compelling case for some money, but I'm just wondering what the consensus would be for how much I should, you know, dig well, my heels in on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's also a land acquisition that we're applying for CPA funds too at the same time. Yeah. Uh, that was the one right. up by the reservoir. Um, well, the, uh, I guess the, we, the, the, the soft money fund has, has proved its value. It's enabled us to uh, pounce when the opportunity has been there. Uh, and given that history, uh, it seems like, no, we wouldn't want to do without. But are we confident that we absolutely need all 80 for this particular round and it'll be all used up in six months if we get it? I don't think so. So somewhere in between zero and eight? Um, <laughs> yeah. Half? I don't I know. I mean, Wayne Fiden came to the meeting and presented for this uh, money, but I think he, <clears throat> he realized that you know, they might not get all, all of the 8,000 that was applied for. And it's, it's very competitive, this cycle. For some reason, there's lots of projects that are. What other good conservation type uh, uh, applications do uh, Well, there is that purchase of land up in, uh, in Leeds at, by the reservoir. Right, that's from us. Yeah. 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 And, uh, we'll ask you for the end of Pulaski Park. So it's a very expensive project. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought of that as falling in the same category. But yeah, it's open space and recreation. Yes, so. right, right, it is recreation. I don't know, half? You know, some, some, some useful, some useful pot of money that right, we can not, not a keep us. Not a amount, but no, we probably okay. don't need. Does that sound right? I mean, I don't have it does, any basis. Yeah, it, it sounds like there are things that we there could really There will be other rounds more. coming up, so yeah. right. it's basically in the short term. So that short -term. sound reasonable to you? Sure. sure. It sounds good. Um, I appreciate you bringing the issue. What, does that feel to you like that? I yeah, it's just that, you know, every committee member is going to turn to me and when that question <laughs> comes up, and so I'm going to, I want to have an answer ready for them about well, what the it, it, consensus so it, it, of the group is. The, the sense that you know, there's things in the hopper. If we had nothing, we'd be in trouble. We'd have to yeah. pass on some good opportunities. Right. On the other hand, are we absolutely certain that we'd spend all 80 by the time the next round comes up? No. Um, so somewhere in between, and you know, maybe half, somewhere between 30 and 50 is probably right. probably going to get used. Thank you. I'm just making this up. No, I'm good. Good. Okay. good to get a sense of it. No, I'm All right. chair. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. At least uh, it's, I, I was thinking of the Jim Dostal two different times trying to get me to run for city council. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading in the Gazette. <laughs> Uh, the shouting match between the mayor and Eric Sewer. Oh, yeah, that wasn't great. <laughs> you were there? No, no, no. When I read the paper this morning, it was I, no, no, this is, I elected office just not a thing I would ever do. This is about as much public <laughs> interaction as I've ever had. And, you know, there's a nice, earnest people like this woman who. And I'm worried that, that, that every sentence is she going to go over <laughs> some line and <laughs> need to get a real bill. No, she seemed to be to stay on the reasonable mm -hmm. side of things. Concerned citizens. Exactly. Anyway, Most thanks. Close.